Last week, Bloomberg put out an article about millions of Americans trapped in their homes because mortgage rates and house prices have gone up so much that they can't afford to move. The problem is you'd be trading a three and a quarter percent mortgage for seven and a quarter, which on the median house would mean going from a $1,600 mortgage to a $2,600 mortgage. There are not that many Americans with a spare thousand lying around every month on top of yet more thousands in buyer costs and the move itself. What set it off, of course, was the Fed pushing interest rates to zero during COVID lockdowns to artificially stimulate the economy, at which point Americans refinanced their mortgages in droves, to the point that almost two-thirds of Americans now have a mortgage below 4%, while current rates are 7.3% and rising. Meanwhile, of course, house prices also soared during COVID, thanks also to that same zero rate policy. So the median house now costs 416,000, up from just over 300,000 pre-pandemic. The result is, as Bloomberg puts it, gridlock, as empty nesters put off their retirement dreams and young families postpone buying a house with room for the kids. Bloomberg profiled one single mother stuck in a fixer upper she can't afford to unload and notes that first time home buyers now need to make almost 65,000 a year, no mean feat when you're in your 20s, to qualify on the average entry level home. That's up from 57,000 a year ago. As one Redfin economist put it, quote, the most affordable homes for sale are no longer affordable due to the combination of rising prices and rising rates. As a result, the number of homes for sale now is currently just half what it was pre-pandemic, and existing home sales are down a third. Yes, people are making do with crappy houses. All this despite there being 4 million more people in the country than pre-pandemic. That's the official numbers. Leaving home builders to make up the difference, which they are trying to do, furiously building to both make up for pent-up delays during the supply chain crisis and now for the fact that existing homes don't want to sell. Now, I mentioned in recent videos how that home building strength is one of the major factors hiding the recession. And it's worth noting that when that smoke clears, when rates come down and existing homes go back for sale, all of that furious oversupply could crash prices, especially in places that are losing people or that lack long-term demand generally because they're run by clowns. So what is next? The logjam won't break until rates come down, which won't happen until inflation is dead, which even the Fed says may not happen for years to come. Indeed, if inflation holds up, oil prices are suggesting it could, the Fed could even get back to hiking, which makes the gridlock even worse. The Fed's historic interest rate manipulations these past couple years, plus federal trillions pumped out to buy lockdowns, have screwed up just about every industry in America, each pendulum swing, a wrecking ball whipsawing millions of Americans. Each time we hope it's done, they throw a new curveball. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.